Hi everyone, uh, let me briefly introduce myself. Uh, I'm a second year PhD student uh, with a background in physio. My supervisors are Eve Oberwars and Tim Watson, we, uh, Tom uh, Wilcoxon. Today, uh, I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you about sensory motor change and uh, its impacts on fall risk in people with dementia. My presentation, my presentation is divided into four main parts. I start with a brief background, then uh, we look at risk factors for falls. And uh, after that, I'll explain how those factors are associated with each other. And finally, I'll mention implications for future studies and clinic as well. So as you are, you are all aware, uh, dementia is a public health priority and it's not a, a part of aging. Worldwide, approximately 50 million people live with dementia and this prevalence is expected to be, to be almost, uh, to, to be doubled in the next 10 years. Uh, due to the, the impairments in cognitive, physical, and sensory motor abilities. Falls are a complex, multifactorial issue and a major cause of injury to older adults, which results in significant, uh, in, uh, significant mortality and morbidity. And older adults with cognitive impairments are more likely to fall than their peers with, with, without cognitive impairments. Moreover, for, um, a false fall risk is almost doubled in people with dementia uh, because of uh, impaired vision, cognition, and mobility, which often leads to long-term hospitalization, delirium, and mortality, and worsens the dementia outcomes. This leads me to my to, to my next. This leads me to my my next point: risk factors. And uh, cognitively impaired people share some some well established risk factors such as uh, vision impairment, uh, motor impairment, fall history, or environmental hazards. However, there are other risk factors that are more specific to people living with dementia. Zhang et al. categorize the factors related to uh, fall risk um, as environmental, psychological, medical, cognitive, and phys physical and sensory factors. And um, underlined, as you see, underlined uh, factors are specifically related to dementia. Today, I'll focus on sensory input and sensory integration. According to systematic review on risk fall, fall, fall risk, uh, gait, gait problem, cognitive impairment, and sensory motor issues are among those factors highly associated with uh, risk of falling. And uh, gait is an attention demanding, high level and control task, and it requires an ability to integrate sensory input execution and motor planning. Dementia related gait problems are due to distribution, um, distribution of high, high, high um, sensory, sensory motor system that are cannot be um, accounted for by neurological sign and are thought to be results from um, dis uh, disruptions in uh, cortical, cortical and cortical subcortical connections. So turning our attention now, gait associated cognitive and sensory factors. Uh, balance and postural stability is a complex process um, that involves uh, in the integration of information from musculoskeletal system and sensory input, vision, vestibular hearing, and proprioception. So imaging studies investigating the association between neuropathology and gait indicates a strong relationship between frontal lobe and uh, uh, parietal lobe and, um, and, and gait, as parietal regions are, uh, are, um, that are central to sensory, uh, sensor, sensory integration, 
vision spatial function and uh, the and 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 the managing between um, the and, and the managing the relationship between uh, oneself and surrounding. So people with dementia have uh, an impaired ability to integrate sensory information to facilitate performance in postural stability. Attention is a dynamic function driven by sensory perception and selective attention is also focused on sensory input. So as any change to sensory input, such as reduce visual acuity may affect gait and my need executive functions and attention to play larger role to maintain stability. And also the a study in using functional MRI indicated um, older adults showed greater cognitive, uh, cognitively monitoring of movement than younger adults, which was thought to be uh, to, to be related to sensory declines. So, and also visual attention and visual processing speed are uh, are independently associated with um, uh, mobility problems, which be, which becomes more important when other sensory inputs decline. So, cautious gait. Um, are, is uh, maybe more um, cascade may be more likely outcome when sensory input declines and processing speed decreases. And also goal directed movements requires complex cautious control, uh, including efficient evaluation of around and uh, efficient planning. So problems in visual motor uh, functions can cause deficit in motor planning and movement reprogramming, which negatively affect walking and create a risk factor for, for people with dementia. So to summarize, um, in order for walking and uh, stability, postural stability to continue smoothly, sensory input, affected sensory input is tried to be compensated by, uh, by taking more role of executive function. However, the fact that executive function and cognitive functions are, are also affected in people with dementia doubles the risk of falling in that population. So it's suggested that in addition to gait and balance assessment, both sensory motor assessment and cognitive assessment with a foc with pa um, particular focus on executive function should be integrated in fall risk screening. And the result of this assessment should be interpreted in a multidisciplinary approach in a comprehensive um, treatment program. Most of study um, assess a specific type of treatment uh, in order to test um, casual pathways of uh, four risk factors. However, uh, a comprehensive um, program um, to address all these factors is lacking in the literature. And to changes in sensory motor functions could be eliminated by some design solutions. This could reduce risk factors, uh, fall, fall risk, and improve the performance of activities of daily living. Um, in a paper written by Hogerworth et al. in 2019, it was reported how the negative effect of sensory motor change could be reduced uh, using some home-based design solutions. In addition, uh, pharmacological and medical intervention, technological and assistive devices, uh, physical therapy and occupational therapy methods, including uh, uh, methods um, like sensor-based interventions, could be used to reduce these uh, to, to, for these sensory motor issues. Uh, in a recently published in a recently published scoping review, it was reported that some sensor-based intervention could 
such as um, aromatherapy, music therapy, reflexology, uh, dance, or combining a visual and auditory stimulation could be useful for people with dementia to improve their quality of life. Um, we have recently conducted a systematic review of systematic reviews to assess the effectiveness of exercise on visual processing, gait, walking, and ADL, which are more related to, which are closely related to fall risk in people with dementia. I, I presented the result of this recently published systematic review in the first acting event. So you can find the video on the acting website. But to summarize, we found that multi-component, multitasking exercise program or exercise program, including both cognitive and physical exercises could be more effective than a specific type of exercise in improving those outcomes. Therefore, we are currently trying to design a, an exercise program, including eye movement training and maybe auditory, auditory uh, stimulation, uh, like sensory stimulation, um, um, in addition to resistance exercises um, using some game design, some game based design, um, ga game based uh, exercise program. And, um, and to let me sum up my main points. So it is, so it's necessary to understand how sensory motor change um, affects people with dementia and take into this uh, uh, take this into account in both assessment and treatment to reduce risk factors for falling and um, so yeah thank you very much for listening and I'm happy to answer your questions if you have I thought that was uh, really, really interesting. Um, so, so I guess I just have a, a question of how you would see this this sort of screening being implemented to, um, you know, provide these sorts of information. So, let's say you you have um, some form of screening that takes into account all of the risk factors that you specify, including gait, uh, and those people that may be. There's, there's a high risk of, of falls and get taken on to certain intervention programs, including exercise and, and the like. Um, I, I don't know if you've got any idea of um, how often people would need to be screened, because obviously some of the factors that you're talking about might change with um, the, the progression of the various forms of dementia. So I was just wondering if. Do you have any ideas of how that could unfold? Um, yep, yeah, for to provide intervention, um, we should assess their vision and hearing and other sensory motor change before the intervention. But um, they should be checked their vision and hearing regularly to reduce risk factors for falling uh, in that population. And um, there are some technological devices, for example, um, Maria used for, for her study to check their hearing using an application. It's a basic application provided by who, I think I'm not sure he, if she can uh, talk about it later. So they can use this type of application to check their um, vision, hearing, and other uh, mm -hmm. sensory motor function uh, I think, yeah, it would be a good opportunity to use technology as well. Uh, I think it's, it's the answer for your question, I'm not sure. Thanks. Thanks. Any other questions from the room or questions? <clears throat> Do we have questions um, online for Ahmed? We can also discuss these uh, presentations and, and ideas that we've got from them. Uh, later in the sound pit session. So thank you very yeah, thank much. Thank you very much. Let's see, would you like to come up and get your presentation on? Fantastic. Okay. So uh, we are uh, next going, um, well, I 